Welcome back to 5 Minute Knives, the channel that's starting its own arm wrestling club. Today, we're going to take a look at a knife that was sent to me by a company I've never heard of, but may surprise you. First, let's pay a bill. Okie dokie smokies. Alright, so, this company, Ned Foss, N-E-D-F-O-S-S, reached out to me via email and said they saw the channel, they'd like to work with me, they'd like to send me a knife for review on the channel, and I was incredibly flattered. I'll tell you why. Because a lot of companies I reached out to coming up with this channel blew me off. You know, companies I really wanted to work with, companies that I said, hey, let's do a giveaway, Maybe send me a knife, I'll send it right back, I don't need anything for free, blah, blah, blah. Crickets, man. I got crickets. There they are. Hear the crickets? That's what I got. So, Nedley Foss had the good sense to reach out and butter me up by saying, we'd love to be part of what you're doing. So, good on you. It worked. Uh, I'm interested. So, I told him which knife... I knew my audience would connect with, and I knew it would be a home run for you guys. Uh, the price point, the geometry, the design, I knew you guys would probably buy it. And so they promptly sent me the wrong one. <laughs> so you guys know that following instructions is important to me. They did not. However, when I checked them on it, they were very gracious, and they sort of seemed to laugh it off via Instagram. So, eh, I'm not too mad at them. I mean, I didn't pay for this, so that's kind of cool. Let's take a look, though. This is the Ned Foss Survival Knife, and it came in this box. Before we take a look at the knife itself, it has some literature uh, about Ned Foss. They offer a wide range of knives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, opinions first. They listen to their opinions. Mm -hmm. According to marketing, they're all about, um, you know, listening to you guys. I like that they give you which uh, edge... Uh, degree alignment for sharpening. That's actually pretty nice. 18 degrees to 22. Yeah, yeah. Cutting is dangerous. That's true. Edge alignment stuff. Not bad, but that's all that came in there. This came in a plastic bag. And here it is. So this is a um, survival knife, according to them. This, this is in 5CR13 MOV stainless. Uh, you do get a Kydex sheath, and I believe this is the rock star of the whole thing. The sheath that this comes with is actually pretty damn solid. No lie. No lie. Okay, this is a good sheath. It comes with a ferro rod, a small, albeit a small one. Tiny little guy. And, uh, but you could, you could start a bunch of fires with that if you had to. I don't have a lot of luck with ferro rods, I gotta tell you. I have uh, a lot of Exotac stuff, fancy stuff, and I'll be sitting there scraping the hell out of that thing. Maybe my skills suck, that's probably it but I don't have a lot of luck with these things. It is comforting knowing you have one, and it also includes a whistle, you know, for letting your lady know where, uh, where you're peeing or whatever. So that's nice. So that's the survival portion, I do believe. The rest of this knife, I actually believe, would be better suited for hunting. So I know you guys aren't that into harpoon-style blades, as per the past, right? So that's not the one I picked for you, but that's the one they sent. It does have some nice grind lines, and you're seeing my fingerprints and stuff. That can probably be cleaned off. There's the Nedley Foss logo. Is it going to focus for me? Bam. Mr. Ned Foss himself. Mr. Foss, thank you so much. No, I don't know who owns this company. There is a bit of a choil here. And although that is not a dedicated finger choil, when I put my medium large hands mitt there, actually it's gate, my thumb rests right behind that harpoon. And this is sort of what makes me think this would be almost a little better for skinning and hunting. I'm not a big hunter. I'm not big into skinning. But with inflation being the way it is, I'll probably become one in the immediate future. Right? My lady went to go buy eggs that normally cost us six bucks for this thing, and they were 20. Dudes, we got to grow our own stuff. We got to make our own stuff. That's all there is to it. This is becoming a prepper's channel pretty quickly here. So anyway, here is the hardware. It's proprietary hardware that it comes with. And this is... Uh, Probably my one gripe about the knife is this hardware. I, I don't have a, a tool to take that out. Not that you would need to, but I also don't like that it sits a little proud from the handle either. I'd rather see this inset. So, Mr. Foss, if you're listening, I would like this inset in the future. I think it would be a little more comfortable to hang on to, although it does give you some purchase points, but it's just not needed. 
I do feel it right there. It's not a problem. It's not, it's not going to rub you the wrong way, so to speak. But would this be a hot spot over a continuous use? Maybe. The handles are nicely done G10. They're rounded, chamfered very nicely. I actually really like the feel of this knife. Uh, the handle does feel a little thin. It's a 4-inch blade. And if you have large hands, this feels a little thin. If you have an SE4, for example, that might even feel a little more substantial. And some people complain about that handle being a little small. That being said, you have plenty of length in the handle. Whereas the SE4, sometimes there's not enough length for most people. So I'd like to see a little more width, possibly. I understand that this is for ease of carry and, you know, you strike that balance of weight and size ratio. Not bad. Not bad. I'm not griping. The Tang sits proud, which I don't mind. It's not uncomfortable at all. And actually, I really, really, really like the thumb jimping here. If I can get a good shot of it. The thumb jimping. Bam. That is nice. That's nicely done, and it's extremely comfortable. And it is very... I'm not slipping, but I'm not stuck either. I, I believe it would keep a hot spot from happening. So that's actually good on you. I, I like the jimping on this. You guys may vary. You guys may want a little more traction there. I like just to know as an index point where I'm at. Uh, this harpoon doesn't do much for me, but when I choke up, and again, you guys might not like choking up because your sharpening choil is right there. This is, I mean, it's just right there. Look at that. I know that makes you guys nervous just watching it. But it can be used. I would use this, you know, for your feather sticks or whatever. It's got a hollow grind, and in a survival blade, I'd like more bushcrafty task. I would prefer a full grind, or flat grind, excuse me. So I think this is more of a hunting knife than anything. I would say we don't really need this, this sharpening choil here, or I would even continue the blade down somehow and make it a full dedicated hunting knife for skinning. Call it a good skinning knife. But most people don't hunt, so I guess it's a marketing thing. Very comfortable in the hand. You know, albeit the handle's a little skinny for me. Not bad. Four-inch blade, that's the sweet spot. Now, this thing runs for $47 on their website, nedfossknife.com. I'll put it on the screen. And then check out the retention here. Bam. Nicely done. No rattle of any kind. And this comes with a combat loop. Guys, let's put this in perspective. One of my sheaths alone. Here's my current potato digger. The Cold Steel Recon Tonto. This sheath alone would run you $60 on my website to have me make this. So this thing's $50 with the knife and a comparable sheath with similar hardware and mounting attachment. Oh yeah, isn't that cool? Balances. And a Cold Steel Recon Tonto is like a cool knife, right? But you guys all know that a solid sheath really does make the knife. They say like clothes make the man. Well, a good sheath makes the knife. Look at that retention. Just perfect. This is my potato digger around the house now, guys. Uh, I put the CM6 in a bag, so that's in a uh, camping bug out bag now, which I love that knife to death, but this is just lighter weight, and I can walk around my house like a samurai feeling very confident with this thing. So that kind of uh, alludes to my point here is that if you're spending $47, you get a sheath that works pretty much as well as mine where I charge 60 for the sheath itself. Check that out. Check that out. Guys, this is well done. Even like, look at the harpoon. Like that would make like a weird shape for me to make in the shop. They just followed it up with some nice molding. And then bam, you have perfect retention. You got a nice combat loop that you can adjust the cant on. You get a fire steel and a whistle with a blade that's totally serviceable. You could use this just fine for a lot of things. This steel is really easy to sharpen as well, which is nice in the field. So stainless. I did not use this because I plan on giving this away. That being said, do I think that the Ned Foss survival knife is worth it at $47? I believe the sheath alone is pretty much worth that. I mean, other companies should take note. You know, Cold Steel gives you these like glass reinforced nylon sheaths that like dull the blade upon drawing. I mean, come on. What's the excuse when you got companies like Ned Foss putting out full Kydex, well done cheese with um, solid hardware? I mean, this stuff is expensive too to buy this. So. I know what everything costs. This is a good deal, and I'm not sucking up to them. Um, my gripes, don't like the hardware. Hardware sucks because it's proprietary, and I don't like that it's proud. I'd like this to be inset. And also the handle was a little spindly for me. And then finally, you didn't follow instructions. I told you which knife would sell. To my audience, you sent the wrong one. So if this doesn't sell, it ain't on me. However, if you guys do pick up knives from them, 
Maybe in the comments say that 5 Minute Knife sent you, Joe sent you from 5 Minute Knife, something like that. Just so they can see that, you know, reaching out to me probably did help them. This is an evergreen ad, and this will always be up. And I'm so far in the Ned Foss camp as far as value. So with inflation being the way it's at now, I suggest we all take a good hard look at companies like this that give us affordable options with good value. The sheath is well done. I mean, it's not fancy. It's not buttery edges like I like, but you even get your little drainage hole that you guys like right there. Very functional. This is a well thought out, well made sheath. You don't have some fancy thumb ramp like I give you, but this is totally serviceable. You got plenty of purchase right here and it works fine. They found a good economical way to get you guys a solid sheath and a knife that feels solid with great balance with a steel that's easy to sharpen and is stainless. Uh, for a survival knife, I'm not really big on hollow grinds. I would make that a flat grind. So if you're listening, these are the minor gripes I have. That being said, if your lady needs a knife for her pack and you don't want to break the bank, or even if you need something that you know is a little smaller and ready to go that you're just going to leave in a bag, this is ideal. I did not take this out in the woods and thump on it because I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give this away. I can look at a knife and tell you whether or not I think it's worth it. $47 for this? Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. And they were friendly. So I'm sure even if they make a mistake in the future, they will fix it. So Ned Foss, so far, we're cool. Thank you for the um, knife. Thank you for acknowledging the channel. And that's due to you guys helping this thing grow. Thank you to everybody that's been signing up on Subscribestar. Other than that, Ned Foss, thank you. Do appreciate you guys. Go check them out, nedfossknife.com. Tell them 5 Minute Knives sent you. And I, I do, as of this point, recommend them. See you next time. It has some literature.